Joel and Fame, we were about a mile from where that derailment happened. And actually, you can see behind me a lineup of buses, probably about a dozen or so right now. Under state law, you can start lighting off fireworks on June 29th. That's this Saturday through July 4th from 11 a.m. to 11.45 p.m. You can also light them off on July 5th if it falls on a Friday or Saturday, which this year it does. There is just something about sitting by a fire. We found a great group of campers here that let us join in their fire. All 159 sites here at the Holly State Rec area are filled this weekend. Steph, please tell me they have seen it all from drivers eating to watching movies to even doing makeup behind the wheel. So this month, they are putting out extra patrols to try and curb this distracted driving. They're a nonprofit made up of Michigan farmers. They've actually been called the Red Cross for farmers and ranchers. And as you can see, their trucks loaded up and ready to head out west. So if you're looking to get in shape this new year, it's not just about exercise. You also have to make sure you're eating right. Coming up, we're talking with a registered dietitian about what to put in your body to stay healthy. It's hard to imagine now, but this section of Central Park will soon be turned into a baseball diamond. Players will be able to hit and run the bases, but with a few minor changes. Currently, tampering or stealing the mail is a federal crime, but under this new law, it would be a state crime. Punishable by a $500 fine and up to a year in jail. Hey Mike, here's what we know. We just arrived here on campus a short while ago. Earlier this morning, students were advised that shots were fired at Campbell Hall. That's the building here right behind me. Rachel Denhollander, the first victim to speak out publicly against Larry Nasser, was in court today asking the judge, how much is a little girl worth? Judge Aquilina's answer, 40 to 175 years behind bars. It was only three years ago that Debbie McIntyre of Fenton laced up her shoes and began running. I am a little competitive. I do kind of, when I like something, kind of try to take it to the next level. McIntyre connected with fellow running enthusiasts through Facebook, and soon her love of running turned into an epic adventure. Fifteen people, all from or with ties to Michigan, laced up their shoes for what they called the Great European Half. And it was just set up to run one mile one mile in 13 different countries. All within 24 hours. On May 18th at 4 a.m., the clock started ticking. We all started our Garmin, ran a mile. Um, out and back, it was still dark. And then, um, and then from there, we just went country to country. After that first mile in the Czech Republic, the group made their way to Slovakia, Hungary, and Slovenia. By country number four, they had already broken the record for most countries run within 24 hours, but they weren't gonna stop there. And we had 15 minutes to um, run, do a group shot afterwards, and then pretty much, yeah, we'd get in the van and go. Austria, Germany, Liechtenstein, Italy, the group ran on. We did get a lot of looks, because we would just pull up in an area and just everybody would pile out of the van and start running. Switzerland, France, Luxembourg, by country number 12, Belgium, the group hit a bump in the road. We got off course looking for a gas station at 2 o'clock in the morning. Finally, the group made it to the Netherlands, their final mile. I ended up finishing my final mile at 402. 13 miles in 13 different countries, all within 24 hours. I mean, that's exciting, right? While McIntyre has other races coming up this year, including an ultra marathon, she's hoping for another European adventure soon. It's so fun running in different places. In Fenton, Sarah Yeager, NBC 25 News. With last night's sudden influx of rain, rivers and creeks continuing to rise. You can see this is a creek here from the Cass River. It's actually taken out half of the road here at Dixie Highway. And this is just one of the many issues residents and drivers are now having to deal with. It flooded in 86 and then again in 78 but I think this is the worst that I remember it being. Carla Miller has lived in Birch Run all her life. Today, she woke up to find Main Street, the road right in front of her house, flooded. I wasn't expecting this, and it's just gotten worse as the day gone, has gone on. Police ended up closing down the road, and just a few miles away, a culvert washed away Birch Run Road near Belsey. If you see that the roads close, don't take a chance. Um, turn around, go the other way. We have road close signs up in very locations. We have high water signs up in quite a few locations. And if you do see water over the road? Don't hesitate to call because uh, we want to know about it. Um, luckily for us, a resident called in and let us know about this area, so that was good. You know, so nobody was injured or got hurt. But. The Road Commission says they expect that list of roads that are open and closed to continue to change throughout the night as the flood level continues to increase. In Saginaw County, Sarah Yeager, NBC 25 News.
In Gratiot County lies the village of Ashley, population 546. But for five weekends a year, the town triples in size as the North Pole Express chugs into town. We've had people from several different countries here in almost every state that I can think of. Peggy Roth has been volunteering at what is known as Ashley Country Christmas since it started six years ago. Okay, one, two, and three. Her role, to take pictures of visitors in front of the historic locomotive, the Pierre Marquette 1225 which served as the basis for the train engine in the movie The Polar Express. The word I hear the most often about the locomotive is it is so awesome. In the movie The Polar Express, kids wear their PJs and sip hot chocolate on the way to see Santa. My goodness gracious, it's such a wonderful, wonderful experience here in the village of Ashley Country Christmas. <laughs> we have a great group of people that love this event, that love the train, that love our town. Elizabeth Russell is the creative director for Ashley Country Christmas and knows none of this would be possible without the dozens of volunteers. Welcome to the village. How was that train ride? It does take a village, yes. To pull this off and to make this go as smooth as it does, um, it takes every single one of us. While the event unites the community, it also brings in revenue. The money that we get from the train, we put back into the village. Um, it has provided opportunity where we would not have had it before. With the train ride selling out every year, it appears Roth and Russell will be busy for many Christmas seasons to come. It never gets old watching the 1225 come into town. In Ashley, Sarah Yeager, NBC 25 News. Meet the Bronner family. Take the cover off and make a green pyramid. Dad Dennis, Mom Samantha, and their two sons, four-year-old Lucas and one-year-old Liam. Wipe your hands off. Just months ago, their world turned upside down when Lucas was diagnosed with autism. He had a really hard time with eye contact, um, just different mannerisms with uh, stimulation from like lights and sounds. <laughs> To be honest, I was kind of in denial about it. I, you know, my wife and I kind of said, you know, there's nothing going on, and I thought of it more as there was something wrong with him than just something that he needed to work with. Lucas has been getting therapy 20 hours each week. He's getting help early, and is, you know, they said there's a chance he may be completely out of therapy by the time he's in first grade. His dad's hope for his young son, independence. You worry as a parent, you know, what, what's going to happen if we're gone, you know, is he going to be able to take care of himself? Luckily, Lucas has all of his family supporting him. You want to do it. I can already see his little brother. He's, it's, it's incredible. He's half his age and he's already defensive of his big brother. His dad's advice to other parents with kids on the spectrum? They are different. There's no excuse. It's just who they are. Just love them for who they are. Help them out. In Saginaw, Sarah Yeager. Oh, no! NBC 25 News.